You know, hockey's a strange game, especially when the WHA was involved back in the day. Now tonight, I did a podcast on the 78-79 Baby Bulls, the Birmingham Bulls, the uh, all the young prospects. <coughs> they had their formation, but the year before, 1977-78, before all the Baby Bulls basically were born, it had probably one of the roughest teams in WHA history. Now, I think the most important uh, uh, person that year for Birmingham was the cameraman to, uh, you know, videotape all the Birmingham Bull players that were skating to the penalty box because there was a lot. So uh, this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about the season, but also the enormous amount of penalties they took that year. Now, Birmingham was starting to uh, really show a lot. They had Paul Henderson, Frank Mahovlich, Roberto, uh, John Garrett in the lineup, and they had a good talent. They finished the season sixth in a very strong WHA with a 36-41-3 and record. They were 287 goals, 4-314 and against. Now, uh... <laughs> Glenn Sondor, and of all people, John Bassett also spent time coaching the team that year, the owner of the club. Uh, it was the Bulls' second season of operation in the WHA after moving from Toronto. Now, again, they, uh, they made it to the quarterfinals, only lose to the, to the vaunted Winnipeg, Winnipeg Jets. Now, the five teams ahead of them that year were all, of course, Canadian. Winnipeg was first. Uh, excuse me, four to five were Canadian. Uh, New England was second at 44, 31, and five. Houston, 42, 34, and four. Sorry about that. I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> I uh, Excuse me. Winnipeg, Quebec, and Edmonton were ahead of them in the standings. Again, Houston was third. A very, a very offensive and lack of defensive Nordiques were uh, fourth. Edmonton was uh, fifth. Uh, and uh, Birmingham was six. Now, if you read the stat line again, what really in the, you know is one thing: all the teams in the league uh, pretty much had more than a thousand minutes in penalties. Birmingham doubled that; they had two thousand one hundred and seventy-seven minutes in penalties. And you're saying to yourself, "Was this a goon squad?" No, well, it wasn't a goon squad. They were uh, a team very balanced with offense and defense. Now, Ken Lindsman had been drafted entering the season. 10th overall uh, for pick for the Bulls. He ended up with <coughs> 76 points, including 38 goals, where, with actually uh, very strong uh, on the power play and short added with five power play goals and four short adders. Peter Mayer, or Marine, now you pronounce it, 71 points in 80 games. Paul Henderson had 37 goals in 80 games. Napier, who had, uh, even though he had some defensive uh, problems that year, he had 33 goals. And uh, Frank Mahovic, uh, you know, at the tail end of his career, had 14 goals and 24 assists for 38 points. And Phil Roberto kicked in with 28 points in 53 games. Now, here are where it gets really, really bizarre. You look down the table of the squad's penalty minutes. They had 10 players with 90 minutes in penalties or more. Lindsman had 226. Mark Napier had 90. Dave Gorman, a very talented uh, right winger, had 93. Serge uh, Baudouin, you wouldn't think Serge would be that uh, dirty because he was a good player. 105 minutes in penalties. Roberto had 91. There, here's where you get a problem. The great Dave Hansen, who put up some good offensive numbers that year, 23 points in 42 games, had 7 goals, 241 minutes in penalties. So, <laughs> he spent more more, more time uh, assisting and uh, getting into trouble than more uh, any other player on the team. Now, Frank Beaton, who was basically, it was his last chance at Major League Hockey for, for him, and uh, he took advantage of it. Uh, in 56 games, he had 279 minutes in penalties uh, with six goals and nine assists. Now, uh, Pat Westrom had 97 minutes in penalties, but uh, another defenseman, and most of these people who were taking the penalties were the defensemen. Steve Durbano, ladies and gentlemen, the classic. Steve wasn't scared to take a penalty. In 45 games, he had 10 points, 26 goals. <coughs> 284 minutes in penalties. Uh, and uh, as we look down, uh, by the way, the Bulls that year also had Vatlav Denimansky uh, before he shifted back to the NHL. Gilles Bilodeau uh, also had a lot of minutes and penalties. 258 that year with uh, two goals and two assists. So between, again, uh, between the, the pipes, they were strong as well with John Garrett and Wayne Wood. Uh, 
but get this, John Garrett took 26 minutes of penalties, and Wayne took 22. So between them, they had uh, uh, 24 minor penalties in a season. That's still a lot for, for goalies. Now, what was uh, very strange in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the same people that caused the problem in the regular season in the penalty box caused it in the playoffs. Durbano had 16, Beaton had 10, Baudouin had 46. Dave Hansen had 48, and Gilles Bilodeau had 27. Now, what was really uh, strong for a lot of the Bulls fans, you look at uh, the emergence of Rod Langway, who was their number one draft pick that year. He, uh, he had a good season. And again, uh, the, the good draft picks they had. He saw a lot of talent. He took Brad Maxwell, Mark Johnson, Norm Dupont, Steve Baker, uh, Bobby Souter was around at the time, and uh, some some good Q, uh, Q prospects. So the idea about the Bulls, they had to compete, and uh, the idea about competing, they had to show toughness. And the player that became a problem later on <coughs> for a lot of people, Team She had played in 78, but he only came to his uh, enforcer role in the NHL or partial enforcer. So he had, uh, this, and he had some, you know, t tough players too. Dale Hokuson wasn't scared, didn't back down anybody. He, he had a, a quiet year in the penalty, uh, penalty box, but he would take uh, no crap. So I, uh, so this was a request from one of our, uh, one of our listeners, and I, Really want to thank uh, thank Anna. I hope Anna. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Spyropoulos, Spyropoulos. Anyway, my Greek uh, Italian is very very rusty. But uh, the uh, she calls the most penalized team in history. Now I don't know if most penalized means dirtiest, but uh, the stats prove it out. If they're not the most penalized team in history, when see most penalized team in history, there could have been minor league squads or NHL squads, AHL, whatever, could have more uh, penalty minutes per game. But they were averaging. If you do, if you look at the rough, uh, the rough stats, uh, you know you're you're looking at between 25 and 30 minutes of penalties per game. So there's there's bound to be a few majors in the mix. So what I what I find really bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, for this season again. You look at the rough penalty minutes. Every team had more than 1,000 minutes in penalties, except one, and that was Winnipeg, uh, who had uh, 988. Now, talking about the playoffs that year, Birmingham uh, lost the first two games in the series by counts of 9-3 and 8-3 in Winnipeg. He won back at home 3-2 in Game 3, but then lost 5-1 uh, and 5-2 to, uh, to end the set. And uh, that year, of course, the Jets had another uh, another strong season, winning it all uh, and showing they were, again, the, the class of the league. But that year was kind of bizarre as well because the Soviet All-Stars paid a visit. They played uh, eight games, and so did Czechoslovakia. And what, what was kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, the Soviets took 120 minutes in penalties in their eight games while Czechoslovakia took 87. So uh, even... Uh, they were throwing, uh, throwing around minors and majors. But the big number, of course, 2,177. <coughs> and how many how many penalty minutes on the road? I think it was a lot more than at home because that year, again, uh, with the, the smaller WHA, they say familiarity uh, breeds contempt. They only had eight, eight WHA teams that year down for more than a dozen uh, in previous years. And like I said, playing each other so often as he did. But again, the top the, the top four were always going to be Winnipeg, New England, Houston, Quebec, and Edmonton and Birmingham, Cincinnati, the Racers, you know, uh, were picking up the pieces. But actually that year, ladies and gentlemen, Cincinnati had a strong year in the penalty box, if that can be even said. 1,700 minutes in the penalty sin bit. So, uh, quite interesting. So, fans of the Birmingham Bulls, that 78 season, uh, there's some YouTube out there that talk about the campaign. But the John Bassett uh, run, uh, Toros and Bulls, boys, that was a, a great time, uh, great time for hockey in Birmingham. Thanks for listening. Bye.